Welcome to 2G1 Reviews presents the best comedy you've never seen. The ref is the best comedy you've never seen. You think you can take me? I'm Santa Claus. Ah! Oh! I just beat up Santa Claus. Hey everybody, Ryan from 2G1, and welcome to a very special Christmas episode of Best Comedy You've Never Seen. And today is really one of my favorite best comedies that you've never seen. We're going to look at a movie, Dennis Leary's The Ref. There are Christmas films. There are films that take place during Christmas time that are now considered Christmas classics. There are horrible Christmas turds. And then there's The Ref, a little-known comedy which was also one of the first starring roles for comedian Dennis Leary. The Ref is directed by Tad Demi, who had directed Leary's comedy special No Cure for Cancer and had re-teamed with him for the hip-hop whodunit comedy Who's the Man just a year prior. Here's your assignment. All of Harlem. I want all crime and drugs stamped out by 6 o'clock. Okay? Unlike most Christmas comedies, The Ref is a very sharp and twisted black comedy. Well, that's not to say that this movie isn't funny because it has some of the best lines ever uttered in a comedy. And I quote this movie consistently through the year. Just see if there's a guy named Murray there, okay? Is there a Murray here? I don't think he's here, pal. See if there's a waste of fucking life named Murray. Is there a fucking waste of life named Murray here? Yes. The ref revolves around a cat burglar named Gus and his sidekick getaway driver, Murray. Gus is robbing the safe of some super hoity-toity mansion looking to get a huge jewelry payola. Now, Gus is a natural with the safe, but this job almost immediately becomes a nightmare. Jesus. Cat piss. Gussie. When the alarm goes off, Murray decides to hightail it and leave Gus behind. Are they both? On the flip side of the coin is Lloyd and Carolyn, a miserable married couple played by Golden Globe winner and Academy Award nominee Judy Davis and Academy Award winner Kevin Spacey. Carolyn starts many activities, but never seems to finish anything. Photography courses, existential philosophy courses, Scandinavian cooking classes. At least I go after my dream. Somebody who takes photographs of Lutfish to prove the nothingness of being. She also cheated on Lloyd once, something Lloyd just won't let go of. It just didn't mean anything to me. It shouldn't even be counted as an affair. If you have oral sex, too, I'll go wait in the car. Ow. Lloyd's big flaw, according to Carolyn, is that he's a mama's boy who has no backbone when dealing with the woman. We're in servitude to his mother for a loan she's charging us 18% interest on. We personally own... We took out a loan. You took out a loan from Satan, Mom. She I guess the marriage really needs a lot of work if you have to go see Dr. B.D. Wong on Christmas Eve. Wow, they seem fun. I hope they have me over for some eggnog and some passive-aggressive Christmas hilarity. Gus is running out of options because cops are putting up roadblocks everywhere, and Murray, his getaway driver, just took off on him. So he has very little options. Gus ends up taking Lloyd and Carolyn hostage at a convenience store. Okay, I said take me to your fucking house, all right? We'll drop you off wherever you'd like. Believe me, we're not heroes. I can vouch for that. Lloyd is Enough. no hero. <laughs> what was that laugh for? No hero, I can vouch for that. That's a lot. But Gus quickly finds out that these hostages don't care if there's a gun to their head. They just want to continue bitching back and forth at each other. Stop sign. Hey, hey. 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 There was no stop sign. Oh, yes, there was. And yes, you did. You didn't even see it. I hijacked yeah, I my fucking I parents. You listen to anybody. Lieutenant Huff here. The police department is led by Lieutenant Huff, played by Raymond J. Barry, who seems to have the respect of his men, but not that of the local community, especially Bob Burley, whose mansion was just robbed. Huff learns about a tape that may have the identity of the robber. State police. Is that necessary? Well, my men are searching the place now. They could easily... But is told to hand over that tape, along with any other evidence, to the state police, which doesn't make Huff too happy. Found this mask with a weird smell. Urine. Phil thought it might be semen. Phil needs to talk to a therapist. Gus then makes the very unwise move of bringing Lloyd and Carolyn back to their house, where he's going to continue taking them hostage. Gus is in the house for all of five seconds before he starts to realize that kidnapping this couple may not have been the best decision. He said I'd run it. I didn't oh, say I'd run it. Oh, come on, Lloyd. The only person who yells is me. Why? Because I have a gun. 
people with guns can do whatever they want. No guns, no yelling. See? He ties up the couple, but the constant bickering between them almost drives Gus to the point of shooting them both and probably himself. The biggest monkey wrench of the night is that the family is hosting Christmas Eve dinner for Lloyd's mother, brother, and his family. Hello? Caroline? It's Connie. We got a little held up. We'll be there in 20 minutes. I hope that dinner isn't ruined. All right, get in the car! So a plan is quickly enacted where Gus pretends to be Dr. Wong, the therapist, who is joining Lloyd and Caroline at Christmas Eve dinner to kind of watch how things go. They all know it's not a great plan, but Gus can't leave yet. And let's face it, Lloyd's not going to shoo his mother away on Christmas Eve. He'd never hear the end of it. Before the family arrive, Carolyn and Lloyd's son Jesse, played by Robert Stein Miller Jr., arrives home. Now, the relationship between Jesse and Gus gets off to a rocky start. Who you are? Jesse. Untie my parents now. So the movie switches back and forth with Lieutenant Huff, who seems to be the only one who is taking working on Christmas Eve seriously. The other cops, they are enjoying their time working by watching It's a Wonderful Life. Where the hell are you two going? Stay here. Huff brings in a tape for his officers to watch. This is called a VCR. It's like a streaming thing uh, or a 4K Ultra HD thing, which, which is kind of like a Blu-ray thing which is sort of like a DVD thing before going all the way back to these analog magnetic tapes. Push rewind. Now, Sean Austin's cousin here can't seem to get the hang of these gosh darn remote controls, which makes me hope that he's never forced to draw his gun on someone. What you're about to see has to be kept within the confines of this room. Now, this videotape contains a key piece of evidence showing Gus committing the crime. Huff wants his men to watch the tape a few times before he gets his search going. And then I realized at this point, I'm actually going to have to point something out. Huff rewinds the tape so his men can watch it again. With the video cassette as a film progressed, the magnetic tape spooled from the left side, which was the unplayed side, to the right side, which was the side that was already played. At the end of the film, all of the magnetic tape would be on the right side. Your VCR would then have to rewind the magnetic tape all the way back to the beginning so you could watch the film again. It's why Blockbuster was well known for their Be Kind Rewind program, which basically meant if you didn't rewind their movies, they would charge you a dollar. Some uh, county prosecutor guy? One of the cool things about video cassettes was you were able to tape things on them. Let's say you were going out on a Friday night, but didn't want to miss an episode of Mr. Belvedere or Sledgehammer. You could pop in a VHS tape and program your VCR to record your show so you could watch it later at your convenience. Unless you were my mother, who never figured that out. Now, if you were all like, no, no shit, shit Sherlock. Sherlock, I'm explaining this because millennials are all self-entitled kids who sit on their cell phones all day. Unlike us kids from the 80s who were so fearless and adventurous. Huff rewinds the film. And then his men try to figure out how to play it, except they end up hitting record and turning back on It's a Wonderful Life. All right, we don't have much time. Pay attention to any distinguishing features. So what happens when someone from the prosecutor's office turns up for the tape? I don't want any plastic. Lieutenant Huff, I, I believe you have some evidence in your possession belongs to the county prosecutor's office. Well, they only get Jimmy Stewart. That and a very disappointed Lieutenant Huff. A plan is quickly enacted where Gus pretends to be Dr. Wong, the therapist, who is joining Lloyd and Carolyn at Christmas Eve dinner to kind of watch how things go. As this is a very dark comedy, I always appreciated that the film did not deteriorate into some slapstick film, especially because of the situations that come on during the third act. Speaking of which... Lloyd's family arrives, which includes Golden Globe winner Christine Baranski and Tony Award winner Glynis Johns, who played Lloyd's sister-in-law and mother respectively. These people aren't very nice, and it actually has Gus feeling bad for Carolyn and her treatment by the hands of her in-laws. Caroline? You see, Dr. Wong, the simple truth is that she's a nasty, selfish woman. She has ruined my son's life. Lady, why don't you just sleep with him? Let us all off the hook. Hell, Gus even feels bad for the mama's boy. 
My first response to my mother's offer to live here was absolutely not. Lie. We were sitting in our bedroom on, on 78th Street. We were smoking a joint, and I said absolutely not. I have had enough sex and drugs and... and, and Sit down and, and shut up. As the night unravels, the family starts to not like Dr. Gus's hands-on, shut-the-fuck-up approach, but Gus's effect on Lloyd and Carolyn actually has the duo defending each other for what has been the first time in years. It's the same what situation. What difference does any of this make now? You're getting a divorce. Mother, is it possible for you to shut the fuck up for ten seconds? Don't talk to me like that in my own house. You know what I'm going to get you next Christmas? A big wooden cross. So every time you feel unappreciated for all your sacrifices, you can climb on up and nail yourself to it. At this point, Gus just kind of sits back. He's, he's absolutely mortified. He just wants out of this house and suddenly he's stuck in like a sitcom -ish drama. So what can come next? Hey. Well, how about J.K. Simmons, the blackmailed commandant of Jesse's military school, suddenly showing up and ratting Jesse out for being a 16-year-old con artist who's blackmailing him with, like, photos with him and a prostitute or something? I'm Lieutenant Siskel from the Academy. Is there some trouble? Uh, yes. Yes, and I, I couldn't have let it wait any longer. And not only that, but the cops are now closing in on the house, ready to arrest Gus. So what happens? The family enacts a plan to save him. Why? Okay, fine, then we can hide you. We can hide you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, the hope mm -hmm. chest. We'll put you in the hope chest. Take me in the castle. Forget about it. Oh, no, path through the woods. Jesse, quick, take Gus to the path through the woods. Well, what do you want us to do? Turn him in? I can't spend my whole life sending everybody I care about to prison. I don't know, because they've all come to love this cat burglar with a heart of tobacco. For tonight's curfew goes in. Because it's quicker. Not the way you. <sighs> It's not a oh, yes. Down at the docks, Gus is able to reunite with Murray, who has acquired a boat, and thusly able to get around the roadblock and the duo escape. Actually, the original ending had Gus turning himself into police to show Jesse that you can be good or, or something. I never saw the original ending because test audiences hated it, and so they got rid of it and had the happy ending where the thief gets away. Now, the ref wasn't exactly a failure. It grossed $11 million, but this is on an $11 million budget. Dennis Leary's career would continue to actually take off as he started to star in Sandra Bullock movies, Pixar cartoons, and hands down one of the best films from the 90s you never saw, Suicide Kings. Spacey won the Oscar the very next year for Usual Suspects and actually reunited with Dennis Leary in A Bug's Life. It's a shame in the very large pantheon of Christmas films that the ref is totally forgotten about. But just like a similar but more popular black comedy, Bad Santa, the more you watch the film, the more you greatly appreciate it and its humor. Maybe the black comedies get better because the whole world's just becoming, you know, more cynical assholes. I'm okay with that. You should just go out and buy your copy. So every year, you could just throw it in and watch it. Actually, I don't, I don't think people buy DVDs anymore. Um, the VHS may be available, though. The ref stars Dennis Leary, Kevin Spacey, Judy Davis, Christine Baranski, B.D. Wong, J.K. Simmons, Raymond Barry, Adam Lefebvre, Glynis Johns, Robert Stein Miller Jr., and Richard Bright. Check it out. It really is one of the best Christmas comedies you've never seen. Thanks for watching. It really helps if you like, subscribe, and comment below, especially if you like what you saw today. We will be back with another best comedy you've never seen, but until then, this is Ryan from 2G1, and I think I'll just be right back in a moment. I'm Raymond J. Barry. I molded Brandon Lee. I helped stop Michael Douglas and let Jean-Claude Van Damme save me. But I always hated that Dennis Leary was the one that got away in the ref. Thank you very much for watching 2G1's Best Comedy Ever Seen. It's been one full year of Best Comedy You've Never Seen here on 2G1, and as it's Christmas, I wanted to give some special thank yous. First and foremost, to Chuck and Sean of Lindsay from Chuck Load of Comics, my favorite comic entertainment show on YouTube, and not just because I'm on it every so often. A big shout out to Professor Shy Guy, usually hear his music each and every episode and you should run over to Bandcamp to check out all of his incredible music. Josie pops up every episode thanking our viewers with ASL and I can't thank her enough for thanking our viewers. Her YouTube channel is full of makeup tips which helps everyone but me. 
because I'm already so damn pretty. Merry Christmas to you too, Josie. Whenever I need a voice, I turn to Nick Twist, host of Life with a Twist on Club Ultra TV. If I'm not doing the silly voice, it's usually Nick, and a big thank you to you. A very, very huge thank you to Raymond J. Barry, one of the coolest men on the planet, for guest starring on this episode. It truly was an honor, sir. And with that, cue the music. your Christmas wish came true. You're to be out of here the day after Christmas. Bob. Yes. I nailed your wife three times, Bob. She said you never went three times, Bob. Hey, guys. This is Jamie. And this is Dim. And we're from Alpha Rabbit. Thank you for watching Best Comedy You've Never Seen. It features our song Winter in Trenton. We hope you enjoy. Have a happy holiday, everyone.